Well, hello, friends. Greetings in the lovely name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and welcome to another episode of the Bible verse by verse. In this episode, we're going to the Gospel of John, chapter 2, and we're going to be talking about the marriage at Cana. Before we get into it, let me draw your attention to our information box below. Please visit that. Click like and share. And this is most important. If you're not a subscriber to our channel, please subscribe. That way you will be able to uh, be notified of all of our content. And uh, we are uh, producing a lot right now. And I'm sure you would be interested in every bit of it. Now let's pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, you who sit upon the circle of the earth, we ask that you would illumine all in us that is darkness, and on our minds that we might perceive the truth, and on our hearts that we might believe the truth, and on our lips that we might speak the truth with clarity and conviction. We ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Now we're going to go right to uh, our scripture lesson today in the Bible, verse by verse. We're going to be talking about the marriage at Cana of Galilee. And this is uh, the Gospel of John, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. Don't know how much we'll get to in this episode, but we will push forward at this time. And the Bible says, And the third day there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus saith unto him, They have no wine. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. His mother saith unto the servants, Whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. And there were uh, set six water pots uh, of stone, after the manner of the purifying of the Jews, containing two or three firkins apiece. Jesus saith unto them, Fill the water pots with water, and they fill them up to the brim. And he saith unto them, Draw out now and bear to the governor of the feast, and they bear it. When the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, he knew not whence it was, but the servants which drew the water knew. The governor of the feast called the bridegroom, and saith unto him, Every man at the beginning does set forth good wine, and when men have well drunk, then that which is worse. But thou hast kept the good wine until now. This beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee, and manifested forth his glory, and his disciples believed on him. Now we have prayed and we've read our uh, scripture text. Then let's go right to it. First, I want to make mention just of these first 11 verses just in general. Uh, I want to comment on the term, the sign. The Greek is semeon, and it's Strong's Greek number 4592. Now the word used by the evangelist for miracle is sign. The sign of water changed into wine shows Jesus as the fulfillment of Jewish purification or ceremonial cleansing. Namely, the wine equals blood. Six water pots being symbolic of man because six is the biblical number of man. And also the statement from these first 11 verses this beginning of signs, this is in verse 11. Now there are seven miracles of Jesus chosen by the evangelist, which he calls signs for their teaching value. That's why he uses the word sign, because each one of these miracles the evangelist uses as a backdrop of some teaching. Each sign has been carefully chosen to guide the reader of this gospel along the path of discovery 
to the person of Jesus of Nazareth, the Son of God. These particular signs serve a specific didactic purpose. Now, one, the first sign, and I'm going to just introduce these miracles. There were seven of them, and Jesus did many more miracles, but John chose these seven for a particular reason. The first sign that he chose is the transformation of water into wine, which we're looking at here. And this presages the replacement of the ceremonial washing of the Jews with the sanctifying properties of the blood and the spirit of Jesus that is present in the new covenant. The second sign was the healing of the nobleman's son in chapter 4, verses 46 through 54. And this nobleman was healed by the word of Jesus from a distance, which demonstrates Jesus as the word of life. Thirdly, the third sign, the miracle of the paralytic at the pool of Bethesda in chapter 5. Now, this draws the reader's attention to the words of Jesus and compares them to the healing waters of the pool. And this sign is, is given to us in chapter 5, verses 1 through 9. The fourth sign, the feeding of the 5,000 with five loaves and two fish, recalls the feeding of Israel in the wilderness with the manna and looks forward to the Eucharistic ministry of the Lord's church. And then there was sign number five, which is the walking on the waters of the Sea of Galilee. And this is chapter six, verses 18 through 20. And this recalls the crossing of the Red Sea by the children of Israel. Now, these last two signs, the feeding of the 5,000 and the walking on the water, symbolizes a new exodus, which is being led by Jesus who is the prophet, like unto Moses, out of Judaism. An exodus, a new exodus, out of Judaism. And then the sixth sign of the healing of the young man born blind in chapter 9 demonstrates the triumph of the light of the world over all darkness. And then the seventh sign was the raising of Lazarus from the dead in chapter 11. And this demonstrates Jesus as the resurrection and the life. Amen. Now, in recording the events of the marriage at Cana, let's come back now to our present sign, the first sign. Uh, John continues the theme of water that is associated with Christ so prominently, prominently in this fourth gospel. Here, and in chapter 3, verses 3 through 5, and then in chapter 4, verses 4 through 26, then in chapter 5, verses 1 through 9, and chapter 6, verses 16 through 29, and chapter 7, verses 37 through 39, and chapter 9, verses 1 through 7, chapter 13, verses 4 through 17, and chapter 19, verses 31 through 37, and then lastly, the entire 21st chapter. There are 10 events associated with water in the fourth gospel. Now, that's 10 if the mentioning of John's water baptism in chapter 1 is not counted. This is just water in the ministry of Jesus. Now, 10 is the biblical number of works of redemption. We may then indeed call this the uh, Johannine River of the water of life. Now, the Bible says uh, we, in verse 1, 
you know, I, I want to really cover verse 1 through verse 11 in one setting, and we're already 10 minutes into this episode. So I'm going to stop right here. And then when we come back, we I've introduced this uh, uh, set of this passage. So we're going to come back in our next episode with chapter 2 and verse 1 and talk about the marriage. Friends, let me uh, draw your attention to our information box below. And there in our information box below, uh, I want to uh, ask you to consider our giving information. And uh, perhaps you could come along beside us with a reoccurring gift each month to help disciples of the way to continue to produce content at the quality and at the level that we are here producing it. And, and we fully believe that this is teaching that you just will not find hardly on the internet at all. And as far as your churches are concerned, you can almost forget it. Because most church pastors and teachers, they their mission, and I'm not faulting them for it, but their mission is community. And they are focused on fellowship, community, meeting the physical needs of the people, as well as the spiritual. But very little teaching of the Word of God goes on in churches today. But here, on Disciples of the Way, on the Bible verse by verse, we know that you're getting solid biblical teaching. Plus the plethora of all the other productions that we do. We are worthy of your consideration to be a partner with us in this noble cause. The Lord bless you until we're together again. Oh, and I one other thing. In the lower right-hand corner is our ministry emblem. If you'll hover your cursor over that, a little banner window will come up where you can subscribe. Please subscribe to this channel. God bless you. And it's my prayer that the Lord sanctify you wholly in your mind, in your body, and also in your spirit. And until we are together again, beloved, Godspeed.